Okay, so for today's question, we have an isosceles triangle. In the isosceles triangle, we're given three axes. We're given an angle of 105, 105, and 150. We're given an elevation and we're given a plan. And as you can see, um, I'm going to start with my axis. So I'm going to put my axis in yellow just to highlight it on the page for you so you can see exactly what is happening. So I'm going to start off with my vertical axis. I then have an angle of 105. Angle of 105 next. So I'm going to get my protractor. Line up my protractor and measure 105 and when I line that up it's gonna get my line here I'm gonna draw in this line in yellow as well just to highlight the axis you don't have to do this on the page I'm just doing it now just in case there's any confusion so next we're gonna go 105 again make sure you're measuring the right angles the last thing we want to do is to measure inaccurate angles um, 106 is very different from 105. So there's my axis of my triangle. Now, I am not given any length of my triangle to have. As you know in previous questions, they sometimes tell you the distance or the dimension of this they haven't in this case. So I can make it any size I want. So I'm just gonna come down here and draw a lovely horizontal line. Now, as you can see from this horizontal line, this horizontal line is perpendicular to my vertical axis. In order to get my line at the side, I need to draw a line which is perpendicular to this axis here. So I'm going to get my two set squares and using sliding set squares two set squares using sliding set squares I'm going to extend on my line. Now as you can see it's not hitting the vertical line so there's a very simple solution to that and that's just to extend it on. Again I'm just going to extend it in colour like so. So I have two sides of my triangle. In order to get the third side, I simply connect them together and that gives me my third side like so. So I have my triangle drawn. My next move is to come down and get the constructions for my plan, which is going to be down here. So in order to get the plan, I'm going to bring my three points of my triangle down vertically. The reason we're coming down vertically is because we're going at an angle which is parallel to this side are perpendicular to the base. It does not matter how far you come down, but just be aware of the fact that if you're too close up, your 3D might intersect with your plan view. So I've drawn a horizontal line here. Because this is an isosceles triangle, this center line is right in the middle of this line. So I can take my compass, put a point to my compass here, extend it to my side, and I can draw my semicircle in. Now, once I draw my semicircle in, I'm now going to connect the three points of my triangle. I want, oh, sorry, off my semicircle. And when I connect them, that has to give me a right angle. If you're in doubt, it means that your construction is off slightly, but I have to have a right angle here. My plan is going to go here. Next is my elevation. Now, I've decided to put my elevation on the left. You could put it on the right if you want, but I'm going to put mine on the left. In order to get my elevation, I'm just going to put this down. For my plan, I brought my three lines down parallel to this line or perpendicular to this line. Over on the left, I'm going to come along parallel to this axis that point here. So I'm going to bring up my three points parallel. Now, once we've, I'm just going to minimize this because it's slightly in the way. Once we've drawn this, you'll notice that this is not in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come at a distance and I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to these. Exact same as it in my plan. But as you can see, I've no middle. So what I must do is I must bisect the distance. So just three quarters, roughly three quarters of the way. Swing my two arcs. And where they meet, we're going to join them together. And they meet at this lovely point here. So at that point, we're now going to draw our semicircle. Always double check that it reaches and it does. Lovely. Now, we're going to connect this point, this point, and this point. The three points coming from my triangle. Yet again, like the plan, it must give you a right angle. If it's not a right angle, your construction is off. So we have that space or that uh, construction drawn there. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to look at our dimensions. 
I'm just going to move this fella here and look at our dimensions here. So for my elevation, which is going to go on this, I have a radius 40 here, which means that this line here is going to be 40 and this is going to be 28. So up here, I'm going to measure 40 and I'm going to measure 28. And from those two points, I'm going to go up perpendicularly to the point. Brilliant. Now, the next thing that I have to do is I have a height here of 20 and 40. So I'm going to measure a 20 here. And I'm going to measure a 40 here. And from those two points, I'm going to go horizontally across. Now, I know some of you are looking at this going, that's not a horizontal line. Because this is an elevation, technically we have horizontal lines here and vertical lines here. They're just obviously turned because of our view. I'm now going to darken in my elevation shape. So on the side here, dark line and our base this top line up here and finally we just need to get our quadrant as we know a quadrant is a quarter of a circle Lovely, and there's my elevation drawn in. Now, I'm just going to move this view here. Now, this is very important what I'm going to say next. As you can see, oh, sorry, as you can see from the shape, we have a width here of 68, and we have a width here of 68. Because I've gone 68 in this direction, I need to do my plan going 68 this direction, not 68 this way. So my 68 is going to be me measured here. So I'm just going to move this up just a little bit, just give us a little bit more space. Okay, so I'm going to measure now. I'll just bring back my view of my plan. So I have a 28, which I'm getting from here, 28 and a 40. So I'll have 28 and 40, and I'm going to measure them here. So there's my 28 and my 40. And those two lines obviously coming up perpendicularly. Next I have here on this side, I have a 28. And I can put that dark. Uh, I have a 28 and I have a 16. So I'm just going to get my 16 and then my 28. And from those two points, sorry, from just that one point to the 16, I'm going to come out here parallel. Like so. So that gives me this lovely angled line here. Now, what I have here is I have a 16 and I have a 24 here. So I'm just going to measure my 24. 24 brings me to this point here. I'm going to join these lovely and dark. Now, this point is going to connect over here to my 28. So I have 16, 24, and I should have 28 in total over here. Sorry, I measured 16 and 28. It should be 28 there. Apologies, lads. So there's that. So that's going to draw in. For this point, we can go straight this way. And we're going to connect this point here to the corner, like shown. And this point here. And that gives me my plan view. So as you can see, I have an elevation out of a plan view now at the moment. Now, I'm just going to show you what the shape is going to look like. Um, so if I'm just going to show you now, this does show the decision, but it's a 3D shape and look for this is the kind of shape we're looking for. So if we can look at this shape, I'm just going to hide it. What we have here is we have this point, which is obviously going to come this whole line. So I'm going to bring up these two points up and I'm going to bring these two points across. All points coming from my plan are going to come up vertically. So you're coming straight up. You're coming straight up. For my side, we're coming parallel. So this yellow axis line here, we're going to bring this point down, bring this point, and we're going to get our, um, get our dark mechanical pencil and just darken it in. It's a good idea as the shape is coming together to draw it in dark, as it gives you a better idea of what's happening. Next we're going to get this face here which is coming along. So this is going to give me this point here. So we're going to come up vertically 
Now I'm just using sliding set screws for handiness, but we'll just bring this point up vertically. Then we're going to bring these two chaps out. So have him and him. And they're obviously going to meet at this line here. So lovely. So as we can see now, we've got this lovely corner. I want to get, see this line here. Now this line is going to be achieved by this point and it's going to be on this line. So just going to bring that up. Brilliant. And the next thing I'm going to get is I'm going to get this line here. Now that's going to be all along here, which is this line here and this point up here. So we're going to bring this point up vertically. So that's coming up firstly, and we're going to come back at our angle from this point. That's here, and then we're going to join them together. Lovely. Now, next, if we look at our shape again, I'm just going to pull this out here and zoom out. We're going to connect to this point. This connects to here which is fantastic. So that's there. As you can see, we're getting a lovely shape here together. Now, I have a height coming off here, and this height is going to be on this line. We need to bring this point back. So parallel again. And that's going to give me this point here. Lovely. Now I have this point here, which is obviously going to be on this line. So I'm just going to extend up this line another little bit. And I'm going to bring this point down. This is going to come up dark. And it's going to connect to here. Fabulous, okay. And I'm just going to get this point at the back now, which is going to be obviously on the same line. And that's giving me this point here. I'm going to connect them. Now, all that I'm missing now is my freehand curve that will go on the front here and at the back. I'm not going to see a lot of the one at the back, but I will see the one at the front. The way I like to do it is I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to line up my ruler and when I get here I have 40. I'm going to go 10, 10, 10 and 10. Now that gives me obviously a point here on the ground and a point up here. I need to bring up these points. So this is going to come straight to here, here and finally here. Now I'm just going to index those points. That gives me point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if we look at our shape, we already have point 5 here and 5 here, because there's obviously a front and a back, and we have point 1 here. Now I need to find these points 2, 3, and 4, one, and down here. So I have, this is point 5 here, this is point 1 here. So just using my set squares, 1, 2, three and obviously four and they'll be the exact same points that are at the back also that's five four three and two and one two three four and five so I have points one I have points five I'm going to go two so point two is going to come down I'm going to bring down three at the same time so two comes up there's two three very careful we're following the correct lines if we're off now here it can be very awkward and four just above the tree line as well just coming out just on it that's okay and four is this fella here and once we have all these points we're going to join them together in a neat freehand curve
lovely now I won't see all the back as you can see I have a line coming here I'm going to get five and four and three at the back just so I can get the portion of the curve that's right so four is here three is here and then finally two is here so if we just lightly put that in two and just while I have it one at the back which will be here now gonna line up it's gonna go dark until here I'm just gonna freehand that bit in there and that lads is my full completed question